can't have the radio on. Good morning, YouTube and the internet. I've finished tidying up or getting the stuff out of the head. It's just going to sit there for now. It's fine. It's time to inspect the crank. Now I'm going to tell you this is not the right tool for this job. You should have um, an actual micrometer. This is going to do to tell me if it's a long way out or which one of my cranks is the best one I have. So I don't have a micrometer. I have verniers. Okay, so these are digital verniers. Uh, Imperial and metric. So I'm going to be working in metric because that's what the book's in. The book goes to one micron. These go to two decimal places, which is two microns. Uh, uh, sorry, ten microns. Um, and ten microns is a third of a thou. So it's more accurate. This goes down to a half thou, but it's more accurate to be working in microns. Otherwise, I'd just convert the dimensions. So. If we had a micrometer, we would do the same thing, but we don't, so we're going to use this. If you don't know how to use vernies, you probably shouldn't be doing this job, uh, or micrometers. Okay. First general bearing measurement is 55.07 in the horizontal. We've got the woodruff keys here on the top. That's number one, that's top dead center. On the back side here, we've got the dowel and the um, bit that fly, bolts to the flywheel. I can't remember what it's called now. Uh, they're 90 degrees apart, so we're going to take measurements at horizontal and vertical, so we'll get a good idea of the roundness. We're also going to take a measurement either side of the, um, the oil gallery hole in each of them, and that way we'll get an idea of any tapering that's in there. So the first dimension is that, the second one fifty four point nine eight. So we're going front to rear, um, front side and rear side of each one, these are all horizontal. Okay, so we've done the full crank. In the horizontal, I've rotated it down 90 degrees, the Woodruff keys over here, the um, dowel on the back is vertical, and now I'm going to take another set of measurements, and it'll tell us, you know, if they're out around at all, and then I'll compare these measurements to the service manual numbers. Actually, let's have a quick look. So, the crank. Crankshaft journal, which is what we're measuring, should be between 54.951 and 54.975. So we'll just say between 0.95 and 0.97 for our purposes. 98 seems a little bit big. The front one actually seems to be big. I'm going to take some new measurements. Fourth journal seems to be slightly under. The first journal seems to be slightly over. The rest seem to be in spec. If I'm reading that right, I haven't looked at this very closely yet. I'll re-measure those. Um, just to be sure, it's that one. I may have got it in the oil gallery. Yeah, oh. <laughs> 54.98, that's right. It was actually 0.95 then, but it's not that far out. And that wouldn't matter if I was putting this together. Yeah. That is 54.92. Bit rushed doing it on the camera, trying to look like I knew what I was doing. 
54.90 and the rest of them I took more time with because I didn't do it on camera well I did a couple of them on camera but uh, and there's nothing wrong with measuring two or three times to be sure okay anyway I'm going to do all the measurements write them all down I'll come back to you with the result So immediately some of these are slightly undersized. I don't have the tolerance here of what the limit is. I think that's the that's the number when it come out of factory. There should be a service limit number somewhere. This is not the whole book though, this is just part of it. As I've discovered this morning I need more than what's in here. Uh, these handful of pages are printed at work. I need all of it. Oh, okay, so there's the limit there. So the the limit for the main journal is down in the oil clearance number. So it's a combination of the journal and the um, the block with the bearings. So yeah, but I'll still measure all of this one up, compare it to the block, see where we're at, and then I might have to look at some of the others if this is at the bottom of its limit. However, I had a good look at this while it was in. It looks in very good condition. There's no wear, no scratching. The, the fingernail trick or technique works. I can't find, I can find. I can feel that with the fingernail just there. So until I had played with that one, I couldn't find one that I could get my finger stuck in. But I hadn't done the rod bearings, uh, the rod journals yet. I don't look at the uh, mains closely. Anyway, I'll measure it all up, see where I'm at, see if this is useful or not. Nothing I'm measuring here has caused the knock, but this is stuff you need to look at before you reassemble. Otherwise, you might just be pulling it out again shortly, especially for a Mac big horsepower. Okay, um, so I've measured the journals a couple of times taken averages, re-zeroed the calipers every now and then, you know, got some pretty accurate numbers now. All the circles are under, by not a lot, but they are under, and all the ticks are in spec. So nothing's over, to be expected. Two thirds are probably under, and one third are probably in spec. Now that tells me that they're just, this crank's probably been ground, polished once before. Uh, like I said before, I think I need to take that in conjunction with that and ensure that this clearance isn't exceeded and I'm probably okay. So while I'm here I'm going to do the uh, rod journals. Same thing, I'm going to measure them all. I'll do it on a new page and take yeah, the process is exactly the same. And uh, Take those numbers and hold on to them for later when I do the pistons, uh, when I do the rods. Alright, so I've measured all of the rod journals and apart from something that made me panic a little bit early on, um, I got very consistent measurements across the board, 47.94, I have one 47.95 and I've got maybe three 47.93s. And the standard size is 47.97. Which makes sense because these have been um, this this engine's been rebuilt once before at least, so it's that agrees with what I measured on the um, on the mains that this this crank has probably been ground and polished once before. That doesn't mean there's anything wrong with it. It just means you need to check your bearing clearances, and it means you need to um, make sure you get the right size bearings. For your clearance and make sure they're not completely out of spec or that they are usable. So as far as what is allowable here, I'm going to assume they've just used a, a bigger bearing because that is below the low number. Yeah okay so we've got bearing thicknesses there so I can measure a bearing easily enough. Hmm. That's alright, I'll double check my measurements but it does seem to be on the skinny side. Um, which I said, like I said, is not necessarily a bad thing. It just means that um, you, you need bigger bearings. 
bigger bearings to maintain oil clearance. Um, I'll have a closer look at this book now and see what I can see. So looking at the book, this grade selection thing is here. Um, upper journal grade number from left to right and lower journal grade number from left to right. So that's the uh, the main journals and that's the big end journals, the raw journals. So I'm going to assume these are measured from factory. It was grade 1, 2, 1, 1, 1, 2 and 1. And grade 1's all the way across. I suppose grade 2 is probably acceptable from factory. Grade 1 is target. Or grade 0 might be target. I've got a grade 0 here. But yeah, so I'm assuming that's stamped from factory after they've measured it. And that'll, yeah, to tell you exactly what you've got. Uh, all mine are under that, so. If we go back here. If we look at grade 2. Uh, there's no grade 2. There's no grade 2. Why have I got grade 2 there? There's no grade 2 here. Crank pen outer diameter. 41.968. Okay, so that's a factory bearing selection. So that's what went in at one, two, one, one, one. Yeah. So yeah. So that was a slightly thicker bearing, and that was a slightly thicker bearing. That seems to be what that is. And that's what was selected from factory. Zero being the target, obviously. And one, twos, and threes being within their tolerances. No drama. So if I just go back to the main size here. Crankshaft pin outer diameter 47.96 and we're getting 47.94 across the board so yeah either the vernier calipers are out which it could be or this has been machined down at some point uh, but it matches with what the the mains dimensions were so I think that's a fair assumption and I can measure the bearings to be sure so I'm going to go grab a couple of pistons now and measure them.